I'm gonna teach you the basics of reading candlesticks if you're a beginner trader. I see way too many beginners trying to make money and enter the markets without actually understanding the purpose of candlesticks in the first place. Reading candlesticks is a fundamental pillar of reading price action. And price action ultimately is reading the relationship between supply and demand, the sellers versus the buyers. If there are more buyers than sellers, well, price is gonna go up. And if there's more sellers than buyers, price is gonna go down. That's obvious, but reading the relationship between the two is the trickiest part, and that is the ultimate element of making money in the markets. So let's hop into the class and understand exactly what a candlestick is and what purpose it serves. So like I said, reading candlesticks, it's fundamental for performing technical analysis. And technical analysis is completely based off price action and reading that relationship between the buyers and the sellers. And we're gonna be specifically focusing on Japanese candlesticks. And there's no reason to overcomplicate it. These are the candlesticks that you see on most charts on TradingView or whatever broker that you're using. And they serve as a really great graphic representation of supply and demand. They're way more visual than Heikinashi candles or the bar charts. And they actually emphasize that relationship that we need in order to actually be able to read price action. So if you're someone who's using Heikinashi candles or you're confused and you're not sure which candles to focus on, you wanna be using Japanese candlesticks, which are you know the basic ones you're gonna use on any platform. So how are candlesticks formed in the first place? So depending on what time frame you're looking at, a candlestick is gonna represent a period of time. If you're looking at the five minute chart, it's gonna represent five minutes worth of price action. If you're looking at the 15 minute chart, it's gonna represent 15 minutes worth of price action. And if you're on the daily chart, it's gonna represent one day's worth of price action. You guys get the idea. It all depends on what time frame you're looking at. So. The first thing that you have to know when reading candlesticks is you have to know what the body is. And this is the body right here. And depending on whether it's green or red, it's going to tell you exactly where price opened and where price closed. So if it's a green candle, price opened at the bottom of the body and it closed at the top of the body, right? So that means price, let's say, opened right here at 350 for example, and closed up here at $4, indicating that price went up during that time frame. Okay, just like with the red candle, it's the complete opposite. It opens at the top of the body, right? That's where price is opening. So let's say it's opening at $4, and it closes all the way down here at $350. Because price actually went down during that time frame, right, from $4 to $350. That's what makes it a red bar. So just remember, if it's a green bar, that means price opened at the bottom of the bar and closed at the top. And if it's a red bar, it opened at the top of the body and closed at the bottom of the body. Okay? So moving on. We also have wicks or tails. So whenever you see a tail like this on a candlestick or a tail like this, so these tails represent the highs and lows of price action during that time frame. So during whatever time frame this candlestick is at, let's say this is the daily chart. Well, the wick, the, the high of the wick is gonna represent the daily highs and the low of the wick is gonna represent the daily lows. Now, it's absolutely the same with a red bar. So the wicks, they represent the highs for both a green bar and a red bar, okay? So we have the open, right here, it closed here. The absolute highs during that time frame was right here and the absolute, oh, the absolute highs was up here and the lows was down here, okay? So let's get an idea of how candlesticks actually form. So we'll start off here, we have one 15 minute candle and let's just assume this started forming as soon as the stock market opened, which is 9.30 a.m. Eastern time for me, so it might be a different time for you depending on what time zone you're at, but let's just say 9.30 is when the stock market opens, that's when the first candle starts forming. So looking at the 15 minute chart, it opened at 9.30 at this price, 
closed at 9.45, right? That's the first 15 minute candle, closed at 9.45 at the highs up here. If we go to the lower time frame, which is the five minute chart, well, we have three five minute candles as that 15 minute candle is forming, obvious. So the first five minute candle starts forming at 9.30 and stops forming and you know closes right here at 9.35. At 9.35, the second one starts forming and at 9.40, that one closes and the third one begins forming. And the third one, like I said, starts forming at 9.40, closes at 9.45. Okay, so you can kind of get an idea of, you know, at what times different candles are going to stop start forming depending on the time frame you're looking at. And with a one minute chart, you have 15 one minute candles, which represent three five minute candles, which represents one 15 minute candle. And, you know, this one starts forming in 930, stops at 931. Then the next one starts forming and you guys get the idea. It's the exact same thing if you're, you know, for the downside, except it's the opposite, right? We're opening up here, but we're dropping in price and we're closing here. Price action went down during that time frame. And as you can see, you know, we have the same three five minute candles for one 15 minute candle. Okay. So let's move on here. So it's important to understand that candlesticks can be formed in different ways. And depending on how the candlestick was formed, it's going to tell us different information about the relationship between that supply and demand. So it's really important to be able to look at a candlestick and identify, hey, what type of candlestick is this and what message is it sending us? Okay, so the first one here, it opened at this price. We don't have a tail, right? So the open was the absolute lows because we don't have a tail here. And the close was the absolute highs because we also don't have, don't have a tail here. So very bullish candlestick. Same thing with this one. It, however, it opened at the highs, closed at the lows, and we don't have any wicks or tails. Okay. With this candlestick, this is a topping tail. You could see that the wick, you know, we have a really long wick, really long tail towards the top. That's why it's called a topping tail. Same thing with this one. And right here we have a bottoming tail where obviously the wick is towards the bottom. The wick is towards the bottom for both the green and the red candle. And with these bars, this one and this one, they are called doji bars. So let's kind of talk about what a topping tail and what a bottoming tail and a doji bar actually represent. And before we actually do, it, I want you guys to pause the video and try to figure it out yourself. Okay. We know that you know, for this green bar right here, we know the open was right here, the close was right here, and we have this huge tail. Try to ask yourself, who won the battle here? Was it the buyers or the sellers? And same thing with this bottoming tail, right? It opened here and closed here, but we have a really large wick. So think about the implication that that wick gives, and like I said, whether the buyers or the sellers won the battle, okay? Let's move on here. So let's talk about how these bottoming tails are formed. So we know that since it's a green bar, it opened at the bottom of the body right here, but we also have a large wick. So what happened here is it opened here. If we go to the smaller time frame, right? This is the larger time frame. This is the smaller time frame. It opened here and it dropped. It dropped all the way down here and formed the lows right here. Okay. From there, who took control? The buyers took control and they brought the stock or crypto all the way back up to make new highs to close up here, which is at the top of the body. So you could see that, yeah, we have a really long tail here, right? The low here was, you know, all the way down here. But why did that happen? And why did it end up closing up here? Well, it's because the buyers took control and they brought it all the way back up. So this is a very bullish candle. And by bullish, I mean indicative of strength. It means the buyer stepped up to the plate and they beat the sellers. So when you see a bottoming tail, just know that the buyers have taken control. And it doesn't matter if the candlestick is red, right? So we know it's red, that means it opened at the top of the body. 
it dropped all the way back down to make a low at this wick right here, okay? But what happened after that? Well, the buyer still took control. They brought it all the way back up to here and it closed right here, which is the uh, bottom of the body, right? So it's still a red bar, right? Because it closed at a lower price than at which it opened. However, it's still a bullish candlestick. Despite it being red, the buyer still took control at the bottom here and they brought it all the way back up and they almost actually made new highs with it. So just because a candlestick is red or just because a candlestick is green, that doesn't tell you the whole story about who won, the buyers or the sellers, right? It doesn't tell you that. You really need to understand you know, is it a bottoming tail? Is it a topping tail? What does the candlestick actually look like? So in order to actually have conclusive information, let's move on to a topping tail where we have a really large wick at the top. Well, this is a red bar. So we know that price opened at a higher price than at which it closed, right? It closed here, open here. So it opened here. We, the buyer stepped up to the plate and they brought it all the way here, right? Creating this high. From there, who took control? The sellers took control and they brought it all the way back down to make new lows, right? Which is, whoops, which is the bottom of this body, right? So this is how a topping tail is formed. So despite this being red, right? Or I should say, actually, no, in this case, in this case, So looking how a topping tail is formed, right? It opens at this price. We have a rally to make a new high at the top of this, this section right here. So looking at a topping tail, right? We have a red bar, meaning price closed at a lower price than at which it opened. So let's kind of read into this here. Price opened right here, rallied all the way up here to make new highs, right? That's where the wick is showing that that's the absolute high. And from there, who took control? The sellers took control and they brought it all the way back down to produce a low at the bottom of this body, right? So the sellers took control. So this is a very bearish candle because it started bullish. However, right here, that's when the sellers showed up. They brought it all the way back down, producing this topping tail, okay? Now, let's look at another topping tail. However, this one is green. Since it's, being, since it's green, that means it closed at a higher price than at which it opened. So it opened down here and closed right here. So it opened, we have a really large rally. So the buyer stepped up to the plate. They brought it all the way up here right? That's the top of the wick before the sellers took control and they brought it all the way back down so it could finish here. And that's exactly where the body closed. Now, despite the, this topping tail being green, it's not that bullish of a candlestick, right? It doesn't show strength because the sellers took control. They took control and they brought it back down. Even though they didn't make new lows, it's, you know, the seller still took control and they tried to make new lows. They brought it back down. If it was really that bullish, if there were really that many buyers, this would not have happened. So despite this topping tail being a green bar, it still shows that the sellers have taken control and it indicates weakness. Now, let's look at the last uh, candlestick that you really need to know, and that's the doji candle. And the doji candle is a very useful candlestick that I personally use in my trading every single day, specifically for entries and for reversals, okay? So a doji bar, if you look at it, you could see that the open is very near the closing price, right? So the open and the close are basically at the same price. What does that indicate? Well, that indicates that the, buy, the battle between the buyers and the sellers was a tie. Nobody really won. It opened at the same spot and it closed at the same spot. And you could see this is kind of how it's formed, right? Where it opens over here, goes up, then the sellers bring it down and then the buyers bring it up so it can close right here, okay? So looking at it, you could think of it as a tie, 
all right? And like I said, it's a really, really great bar to use for entries. So now that you guys have an idea of the different types of candlesticks that actually exist, now it's time to actually put those candlesticks in a sequence and try to read patterns, right? One candlestick doesn't really tell us the story. We need to look at several candlesticks in order to get an idea of what's happening with the stock or crypto. And depending on the sequence of candlesticks, right, they're going to form different patterns. And we can identify different patterns, whether it's a buy setup or if it's a breakout or if it's a climactic play, right? And all of these patterns, I'm going to make YouTube videos about them. So go ahead and subscribe if you guys want to see those videos. Like this video for the YouTube algorithm and I will be posting lots of new content for you guys and actual strategies you can play using these candlesticks. So let me just show you an example of one that I recently or an example of a trade that I recently took. So we have Tyson Foods. This was actually last week where you could see we have a ton of candlesticks and if you look at only one candlestick individually, they don't really tell you much. You have to look at a sequence of them and that's when you can actually read playable patterns and hopefully make money from them, right? So right here, we have a base breakdown right here where we kind of have this support level here. And I actually played this short and I rode the wave down and this was an amazing gap on the daily chart. I'm also going to make a video about how to read gaps and exactly what that is. And we have a nice breakdown that's under the lows here. And I played this short had some really nice follow through. This is the five minute chart. This is the 15 minute chart. So you can kind of get an idea of what the different charts look like. So I actually played this short right under this doji candle that was used as my entry. I put my stop loss right above, had some really nice follow through and ended up being an $1,100 trade. So now that you guys have some idea of how to read individual candlesticks, it's time to learn how to read them in sequences. So I'll see you guys in the next video.